Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will focus on a fundamental machine learning model, logistic regression. It appears in interviews frequently. Sometimes interviewers ask you to write down the loss function or the likelihood function, and sometimes interviewers may even ask you to code it up from scratch. Actually, the first algorithm that the interviewer asked me to write down the equation is logistic regression. In this video, I will first give you an overview of the algorithm, followed by a detailed implementation. Then I will explain to you one optimization, meaning batch gradient descent, that is often used in practice. Now, let's jump right into it. Let's start with the fun fact of logistic regression. Logistic regression is actually not a regression, it's a classification. Specifically, it's a binary classification. It is used to predict a binary outcome from a linear combination of variables. So there are two possible outcomes representing two different classes, class 0 and class 1. For example, we can use logistic regression to classify if an email is spam or not based on the subject and the body of that email. Now, you know what logistic regression could do. The next question might be, how does it do it? To put it simply, there are only two steps. The first step is to get the probability of classifying a data point in class 1. It uses a function to project the linear combination of all features into scores between 0 and 1, representing the probability of being in class 1. This function is called a logistic function or a sigmoid function. It looks like a big S and will map any value into the range 0 to 1. Positive numbers become high probabilities and negative numbers become low ones. The second step is to predict the class based on the probability we get in the previous step and the threshold we set. If the probability is larger than the threshold, the prediction will be class 1, otherwise it's class 0. For example, if we set the threshold as 0.5, then if the probability is over 0.5, the prediction is class 1. I hope these two steps make sense to you. Now let's go over it again with more details and some equations. We will use px beta to represent the probability that y, the independent variable, is class 1, given x and beta. x represents independent variables. In machine learning, we call them features. Beta are the parameters. px beta equals the logistic function g of a linear combination of features. So we could write it this way where logistic function g of z equals to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative z. So you see that we have introduced a bunch of betas. We need to use them to predict the outcome. But betas are unknown. How do we get them? Typically, we use a training dataset to obtain betas. Say there are a total of m training data points. Each data point has n independent variables from x1 to xn and the observed class y. So there will be n plus 1 betas from beta 0 to beta n. We will use this training process to obtain the values of all betas. A method called maximum likelihood estimation is often used to get betas. Specifically, we use betas x and y to formulate the likelihood of getting the observed class. Then we obtain betas to maximize the likelihood. In other words, we want to select betas that maximize the probability of observing the data we observe. So let's first write the likelihood of getting the observed class. For each training data point, we have a vector of features, xi, and an observed class, yi. The probability of that class would either pxi if yi equals to 1 or 1 minus pxi if yi equals to 0. Recall that in a sequence of Bernoulli trails y1 to yn, each trail has its own success probability pi. Then the likelihood function is this. Note that this form involves the power of yi and 1 minus yi, so we typically take a log of it to simplify the calculation. Log likelihood turns products into sums. Now that we have a function for log likelihood, we simply need to choose the values of beta to maximize it. Unfortunately, if we try to set the derivative equal to 0, we'll get frustrated because there's no closed form for the maximum. 
So we'll take a different approach, using gradient descent to minimize the log loss function. Let me first show you the log loss function. It's actually just the opposite of the log likelihood function. Then we want to obtain betas to minimize the log loss. Typically, we use the gradient descent to reduce the log loss over multiple iterations. Intuitively speaking, we start with a random guess of betas. Then we compute the log loss associated with them. Next, we get the gradients at each parameter, and they will be used to update the values of betas. A gradient at a particular parameter is a partial derivative of loss function with respect to that parameter. We repeat this step until the loss reaches the minimum value. In other words, the loss converges. Now, I will give you the form of the gradient at each parameter. For the purpose of this video, we will not derive it step by step. If you are interested in learning how to derive it, feel free to check the link in the description for a detailed explanation. For the gradient at beta j, it equals pi, the probability of observing class 1, minus the observed class yi times xij. Then we take the average from all data points. You see we have introduced i and j here, but don't be confused. Both of them are just indexes. i is from 1 to m, representing the index of number of data points, while j is from 1 to n, represents the index of number of features. OK, I just gave you an overview of logistic regression. Let's see how to implement it. For implementation, we follow the main plus helper function approach. The main function contains the main logic of the algorithm, and it leaves the details to be handled by helper functions. If you have watched other machine learning videos on my channel, you might already be familiar with the benefit of this approach. But in general, the code is clean and organized, it's easy for others to understand it. Also, the code is modular. Changing one helper function will not have any impact to other functions. Now, let's start with the main function. First, we initialize the parameters. We differentiate beta 0 and other betas because beta 0 has a different form or gradient than other betas. We then use a helper function to derive the gradients at each beta. Lastly, we use another helper function to update beta values using the gradients. We repeat these steps for the number of iterations we have specified. If you have watched the video on linear regression, you may notice that the main function of logistic regression and the linear regression are almost the same. If you know how to implement one of them, it's easy to figure out the other. Now let's go over the help functions. The first help function is to initialize parameters. It's very straightforward. We simply set the starting value of beta 0 as 0 and the starting values of other betas as random values. The next function is to compute the gradients. We have a look at the equation of the gradients at each parameter. We initialize the gradient at beta 0 as 0 and other betas as a vector of zeros. Then we loop through all the data points to accumulate the gradient computed for each data point. Inside the for loop, we first get the prediction using the logistic function. Then we obtain the gradient at beta 0, which is simply the prediction minus yi. The gradients and other betas are represented as the prediction minus yi times the j's feature of the i's data point. We accumulate the gradients from all the data points and normalize them by the number of data points m. The last helper function is to update the values of betas based on the gradients we have obtained. One thing I'd like you to pay attention to is the sign when we apply the changes to betas. It depends on how we calculate the loss. In the function, we subtract the observation from the prediction. If the prediction is overestimated, the gradient is a positive value, and we will need to subtract the gradient from betas. If we do it the other way, i.e., subtracting pi from yi, we need to add the gradient to betas. Finally, let's look at the complexity of the implementation. Both initialize params and update params functions loop through all betas once, so both are on. The compute gradients function goes through each data point and each feature, 
so the time complexity is O M N. If the number of iterations is i, the overall time complexity is O M N i. In terms of space complexity, the only intermediate variable we have created is to store the gradients, so it's O N. Now we have done the implementation part, you could use it to do a classification task. But there's one potential problem I want to point out. The implementation can be low efficient for a big dataset. And there's one optimization we could do to make the gradient descent process more efficient. The gradient descent we have just implemented is batch gradient descent. It loops through the entire dataset in order to make one step towards the target. This can be very slow when the dataset is large. It may happen in real-world conditions when we need to deal with millions, even billions of records. In that case, it takes a long time to loop through all the data points, or you might not even be able to fit the entire data in the memory of a machine. So it will make the batch gradient descent process low efficient. So how to improve it? One method is called mini batch gradient descent. It takes a random mini batch from the entire dataset and computes the gradient from it. In this way, the data is much smaller and it could fit into memory and getting the gradients becomes faster. The downside is that gradients obtained from a mini batch tend to be noisier than the gradients from the whole dataset. If a dataset contains outliers and the noisy data may steer the gradient away from the optimal direction. But overall, the parameters will gradually progress towards the target through many iterations. So in practice, mini batch gradient descent is very commonly used. It's more practical to have an approximate optimal solution that can be computed in a relatively short amount of time. Once you understand the concept, the implementation is pretty straightforward. In fact, there are only small changes we need to make to use mini batch gradient descent. In the compute gradients function, we add another input parameter, batch size. And each time, we random sample a number of data points with size equal to the batch size. Then the gradients are computed as a mean of gradients contributed by those data points. Awesome guys, you have just learned how to implement logistic regression and how to use mini batch gradient descent to make the training process more efficient. I hope you have learned something new in this video. Let me know if you have any questions. As always guys, I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this video. I will see you in the next video.